Who are you gonna call? LA Knight. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling. Cena, big match, John. He needed a tag team partner. He needed a hero at the end of the night, and his hero has answered. LA Knight agrees to team up with big match, John, to take on the bloodline. I am Sir Scotland 90, back here on the Fog Wrestling channel. Haven't been making that many videos over the past week or two. Gonna be completely honest here. Been feeling absolutely shit and watching wrestling is tough enough as it really is when you're 100% feeling okay. But when you're not feeling okay, when you're feeling like dog meat, then watching wrestling just gets 10 times fucking harder. So haven't really been making that many wrestling videos haven't really even been watching that much wrestling to be honest but i did check out some of the uh, clips here for smackdown so it's not going to be a in full in detail review it's more going to be a just uh, based off what i've seen in the clips so yeah with that said well um we'll just get into the show we kick off with the bloodline segment paul Heyman <sighs> doing his usual shit you know talking about cena and then out of, out of nowhere Carl Anderson attacks the bloodline. Why the fuck is this bomb Carl Anderson attacking the bloodline? And why is the bloodline getting beat up 2 on 1? <laughs> 2 on 1 advantage and they fucking lose the Carl Anderson. The machine gun. He's firing blanks. What are we doing here? Why is this guy... This would be like Spike Dudley coming out and beating up the two-man power trip. Spike Dudley comes out and he, he beats up Triple H and Austin at the same time and then they both run away. <laughs> you know, like, what the fuck is this? And we then get Jimmy Uso... Fersies, Carl Anderson, we get a match, uh, Jimmy wins, then at the end of the match, Mia Yim runs down to check on Carl Anderson, and she slaps Jimmy in the face on the way down to the ring, and of course Jimmy can't do anything, because this is WWE, and women are allowed to assault men whenever they feel like it, but a man can't even say a bad word about a woman, or else he'll probably get fired and suspended and get like 10 years in prison, I don't know. Um, you know, why did they do this? Why are they so intent on uh, making the men look weak? Jimmy is supposed to be this top guy, supposed to be a member of the bloodline, and he's been embarrassed here. He's been slapped to the floor by Mia fucking Yim. And if it's not Mia Yim doing it, it's, it's Rhea Ripley doing it. If it's not her doing it, it's Scarlett Bordeaux doing it. Um, we just, you know, we, we get it all the time now. It's, it's just, it's dumb. It is fucking dumb. I miss the days of when a woman put her hands on a man. She, she got, fuck it, she got what she deserved, you know? Someone put their hands on the Dudleys, they would go through a table. Uh, that's just how it worked, you know? If women constantly messed with men, sooner or later the man would snap and he would take out the woman and we'd all cheer because it'd be, you know, she'd get what she deserved. It, it was coming, you know, it was building up to it. But now we're li we live in this world where we're supposed to be equal now, but... I mean, I guess we're less equal than ever, really, when it comes to that aspect of wrestling. Um, we get Santos Escobar talking about Rey Mysterio. I mean, who cares? Not really digging Santos Escobar. I think his main run roster's been garbage. We get the Grayson Waller effect with Bobby Lashley. I thought it was okay. Waller's trying to pitch the idea of him and Fury teaming up with Bobby. But Bobby doesn't like the idea of teaming up with Fury. Street Profits come out. They want to speak with Bobby Lashley, but Bobby Lashley is still in the half. He doesn't want to speak to them, and he kind of just walks off and leaves them. Then we get Austin Fury with Grayson Waller taking on Cameron Grimes. Speaking to another guy whose main roster run has delivered nothing, Cameron Grimes. He arrived on the scene. He beat Baron Corbin. This must have been about, what, six months ago? And since then, he has, he's done nothing. Uh, he lost here to Austin Fury. Which I'm not surprised, it's Austin Fury, so of course I think Fury is higher up in the card uh, with Cameron Grimes, and he does have Grayson Waller by his side, so he, sh he should be beating Cameron Grimes, but I mean, overall, just nothing great really. Then we got a, a Rey Mysterio promo, we uh, seen Jimmy Uso attack the Adonis Ashanti. Are we supposed to care? Why the fuck wasn't the Adonis released alongside Top Dollar? That's the only question I'm asking. Then we got Rey Mysterio versus Santos Escobar. But uh, this match, it was alright, I guess. Um, decent match. Is what it is. Rey countered with an inside cradle to pick up the win. So he didn't exactly beat him clean. He didn't beat him convincingly. It wasn't decisive. It was a roll-up. Both men look like they're going to be okay. 
but then the Street Profits come down and they attack Ray and uh, attack Ray and uh, what's his name Santos Escobar. That's the one. And then they attack the other guys as well. So Bobby Lashley's impressed. Big Bobby. The commentary team talk about the signing of Jade Cargo, and I tell you what, they're actually treating Jade Cargo like a big deal. They're talking about how big a signing she's going to be, and realistically, she's done nothing in WWE. She's just she's not got any real sort of fame. I know she had a little bit of a social media following before she went to AEW, but they're, they're treating her like this is a big fucking deal. I've never really seen this before. I've never really seen this before. I don't know why they're doing this. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's new tactics or whatever, but they're, they're pushing Jade Cargo like she's important, like she is a big, big deal. And I mean, hopefully they do that because... The women's division is terrible and they need to do that. Then we've got a pretty deadly vignette. Still trying to come back for his injury. Uh, Charlotte versus Bailey with damage control ringside. Um, after the match, Charlotte wins. And after the match, we have Bailey. Uh, Asuka comes out to save Charlotte. Asuka's looking old as fuck. She is. Uh, the short hair is not doing her any favours. She does not look like. She doesn't look like she... She looks old, okay? Let's be honest. Asuka looks old. That's all I'm going to say. She looks very fucking old here. I think she looks older than her actual age. She is... She, I know she was beginning to slow down in the ring, but... No, she... I know, and I know a lot of people on this channel love Asuka, but I've, I've just got to be honest. She is looking pretty old. And she is old. You know, she's like 42, 43. But she's showing it. You know, she does look older than the other women. Uh, then she speaks in Japanese... Bailey pretends she can read Japanese and says, if you want a triple threat match, you've got it. And she adds Charlotte to the Women's Championship match at Fastlane. So now we're getting Charlotte Flair in a championship match. Surprise, surprise, said nobody. I mean, do we really want Charlotte Flair in a championship match? But, I mean, it's Charlotte Flair at the end of the day. So, of course, she's going to get what she wants. And what she wants is a championship match. So, just another way to get Charlotte here in the Women's World Title picture. <sighs> Couldn't really care. Eos guy's run has been terrible. And then we get John Cena. He was late arriving to the arena tonight. He says, do you really think a man we never give up on his shirt is going to quit? He's going to lay down to the bloodline. Cena is going to go up himself then. He hasn't got a tag team partner, but it doesn't matter. I'll fight the bloodline. Two on one handicap match by myself. And if this was prime John Cena, fuck, he could beat the entire bloodline times two. You know, he could beat the entire, he could beat every Samoan. It could be a 100 Samoans versus John Cena. All the Samoans in the ring at the same time. John Cena would still win that match in his prime, but... Unfortunately, this is an old match John now, so I don't fancy his chances. He's getting beat down by Jimmy, beat down by Solo. But don't worry, because Solo's about to splash him through the table on the outside. Then we get L.A. Knight, and then the crowd go mental, and L.A. Knight runs down, takes care of Jimmy, takes care of Solo. Then he takes care of John Cena's partner problem, he grabs the contract, he signs the contract, and at fast lane, we're getting LA Knight and John Cena taking on the bloodline, so I thought the ending of SmackDown was pretty good, like, I like LA Knight, I'm not too sure why everyone is going fucking crazy over the guy, I think he's very good, but it, it does seem a little bit forced, I, I think at times people will all be sheep and if they see somebody else cheering for someone, they will just cheer along. I don't understand why all of a sudden LA Knight is just becoming super popular. I don't like LA Knight any more now than I did a year ago, but for some reason the crowd do, the rest of the fans do. So I'm not sure what's happened, maybe it was the, the Bray Wyatt feud. Everyone's decided, you know what, fuck it. <laughs> well, let's cheer for LA Knight instead. I'm not too sure what's changed, because I certainly haven't seen much change, apart from the fact that he's beginning to pick up more wins. He's obviously higher up on the card. I mean, I get that. But I, I don't know what... And he always had a lot of popularity. There's always been people that have liked LA Knight because they could see something special. But maybe the other people are just playing catch-up, and now everybody sees what LA Knight has to offer. Perhaps that is it. But can this guy realistically... Be the champion. That's what it's all about. Let's be honest. Forget tag team matches or the US title or whatnot. The world titles are what it's all about in wrestling. If you don't want to be a world champion, as Austin once said, then pack your bags and go home. Everybody should want to be a world champion. But not everybody can be a world champion, especially when Roman reigns. 
is holding the belts hostage. So I've got to ask the question here, can LA Knight actually become a world champion and especially with Roman Reigns holding these belts? I'm not too sure. We've seen Roman Reigns come up against people that I thought had a better chance than LA Knight and he still beat them, he squashed them, he stacked them up, he's pinned them. So I'm not too sure. I would like to see LA Knight be champion. Maybe LA Knight teaming up with John Cena to take on Solo and Jey Uso. Maybe that will be the beginning of this LA Knight bloodline feud. And I hope it does end in LA Knight winning. But honestly, guys, I just don't really see it. So there you go. I like the ending. I thought LA Knight Cena bloodline stuff was pretty good. Other than that, I mean, I'm not going to. I mean, it's Carl Anderson. Fuck Carl Anderson. Women's match I didn't care for. And, you know, I don't really care about the Street Profits and what Bobby Lashley wants for them. Everything's so boring. I'll give it a 2 out of 10, guys. That's it. Let me know your thoughts down below, and I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and peace.